You're listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, hosted by Heather Dyer and Erin Walker. We're on a mission to inspire home cooks like us to try new recipes and make good food. Good day, Heather. Good day. (laughs) That sounds terrible when I do it. Yeah, I, I don't even know what to think about that. But <laughs> welcome to Three Kitchens Podcast. This is Erin, and I am joined with Heather. And Hello. the two of us are going to run through a recipe for you today. Like we well, do. You are. You oh. are going to run through. Oh, well, you're running through there with me. You're alongside. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold your hand. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to need for this. <laughs> well, I can't wait. All right. If it wasn't obvious from our terrible greeting at the beginning of this. I think it probably wasn't. (laughs) Good day. It's going to be an Australian recipe. (laughs) Nice. Because Australia Day is on January the 26th. I was going to ask you, what is Australia Day? But I feel like you're going to tell me. Well, I mean, Australia Day is just like Canada Day and the 4th of July. Okay. I don't know enough about Australia history to know if it's like when they first set it up as like a penal colony or Um, when it became a... So I think it goes back to, well, I did some reading. I didn't write this part down because I was like... Heather won't ask about that. (laughs) But I think it was like 1778 and somebody first landed and propped his little flag into the soil with his boat of prisoners. Mm -hmm. and, uh, And that was in Sydney Harbor. But... Did you know I'm from Australia? No. (laughs) I was created in Australia. My parents Mm -hmm. lived there for a few years before I was born, but they moved back here while my mom was pregnant. So. Right. I'm somewhat Australian because of that. (laughs) I don't know if that counts. I don't think it counts. Uh, Probably not. But Australia Day was a holiday recognized in our house and uh so when they all moved back to canada they would celebrate together and have aussie day so that was a thing growing up for me Hmm. but i can't say i've ever had or i don't remember ever having what i'm making today oh well that should be good i'm going to be making us the australian cake that life would just not be the same without lamingtons i have no idea i've never heard of it (laughs) I've never heard of it, but oh boy, does it have some interesting stuff going on. Oh no, or yay, I can't tell. (laughs) She's like, I don't know how to read this. I don't know. (laughs) Interesting stuff could be, it could be good or bad. Okay. It's a simple recipe, but the history behind it has a lot of debate. Mm. There is a lot of yip yap out there on the interweb that talks about where did these lamingtons actually get invented. So before I can give you a little bit more about that story, I have to tell you what a lamington is. Mm -hmm. So a lamington is a simple sponge cake that is left overnight. You cut it up into squares, you dip it in a chocolate icing, and then you cover it with coconut. And they are delightful little cake squares. So the name Lamington comes from one of the governors, I believe, whose name was Lord Lamington. So the Lamingtons are named after, well, Lord Lamington or could have been possibly Lady Lamington. I'm thinking Lord Lamington had nothing to do with cake except eating it. No, but you know how we like to go through history and decide to... uh, Demanding that he eats it. We just name everything after the dude. No, she was Mrs. Lord Lamington. Exactly. (laughs) And... There are quite a few different stories about where and how these things came to be. So the first is by accident. The Lamingtons were having some sort of soiree or gathering and a friend had picked up a piece of cake to eat it and had dropped it in the gravy. Oh. <laughs> and everyone laughed and went, oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> cake and gravy. And then that she thought, oh, well, instead of gravy, How about I dip it in chocolate? And then dipped it in chocolate and thought it's too sticky to hold, so I shall roll it in coconut. (laughs) Suddenly they're British. Yeah. And then, (laughs) you know, they probably were British. They were British. Come on, Lord Lamington. They were. Exactly. It is a British colony. There you go. Yes. There you go. This is one of the stories out there. The second is that by necessity, the chef 
of Lord Lamington, who actually has a name. He oh, was a French chef, Armand Galland. And Lord Lamington liked to throw these lavish parties. And so possibly the story goes that these guests showed up and old Chaffee had to find a way to feed all these people. And he only had day old sponge cake. So he had reinvented it by dipping it in chocolate, rolling it in coconut, and voila, the Lamington was born. Mm. And of course, we named it after Lord Lamington, not the Instead chef. Of the chef, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if you go down the road that possibly it was named after Lady Lamington, she was friends with a very influential chef at the turn of the century uh, named Amy Shower and was also very good at baking sponge cake. Okay. And so they had this challenge. I mean, this seems like a reasonable train of thought to think of be for baking these cakes because in Queensland, they had kind of the opposite problems that we do here in Canada. We're cold, we're dry. We don't have to think too hard about how am I gonna bake this cake and ice it and serve mm. it to my guests. Whereas in Queensland, it is hot and it is humid. And you have to remember this is before refrigeration. This is before we had air conditioning. Yeah, right. These cakes would come out of the oven. You might let them cool to room temperature, but that still doesn't mean you can ice them and the icing is going to stick around. They're going to so be sticky. And... Up, yeah, so she came up with a solution where you dipped these little cake squares in icing. And then you covered it in coconut so that you could still handle them and eat them. And so that they looked nice, even if the icing wasn't going to be dry and set. Yeah, makes sense. I saw all of this was discussed on this website that I was looking at. And it's the State Library of Queensland website that has a whole bunch of interesting um, history. And so they recommended a podcast called Cake the podcast and it's about 25 minutes long and it is a great discussion about where these lamingtons came from and they talk to a few like historians and experts who've gone and done a ton of research on this and there's still really no like definite answer hmm. or how it came to be but it's this cake that everybody loves it's great to serve it keeps well you can use the day old stuff kind of making use use of leftovers in a different way it doesn't have to be super expensive for it to be a tasty yummy treat so yeah i'm thinking like i'm imagining if it was the chef who was like oh we have these guests i wasn't planning for what am i gonna do i have this cake but it's got a slice out of it from last night or whatever because you're cutting it into pieces to serve it that's right no one will know that it wasn't a whole complete cake <laughs> just a few <laughs> minutes ago right there you go mm -hmm. see there's so many different roads you can go down with this story so in queensland country life in 1900 a recipe for lamington cakes was shared and so they've got this recipe up on the state library website so i am going mm. to give that a whirl and make some lamingtons for us to enjoy because we don't like decorating cakes <laughs> <laughs> we want the easy quick way out that's going to be tasty and yes. satisfying and not the ugliest thing you've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I love a cake that kind of decorates itself. <laughs> so I kind of love this for what it is. Mm -hmm. How does the recipe look? Sometimes those old recipes have weird measurements or strange oh, things. It is a completely uh, modern recipe. Beat the butter and sugar, add in the eggs, sift in the dry ingredients, flavor, bake, cut into squares the next day. Okay, easy. Yeah. Even if we don't solve any mysteries here, there will yeah. still be cake. Exactly. And Cake the Podcast is a pretty fun podcast about different cakes and has the Australian perspective on why they started using certain ingredients that they found when they moved over there. And so if that's your jam, go check them out. That sounds fun. Yeah. Hello, listeners and friends. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of Three Kitchens Podcast. We love going on this cooking journey and we're so glad that you came along with us. Help us grow our food community. Word of mouth is the number one way that people find new podcasts. Give us a like where you're listening, share our podcast with a friend, write a review, and help keep us cooking in the kitchen. Ah, lamington cakes. 
Mm -hmm. You couldn't just be simple, could you? It seems like they would be quite simple. So I'm <laughs> okay. so curious. So they are simple. However, I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole in trying to understand more about cakes in general. Because I think we have totally admitted we are not cake knowledgeable people in any way, shape or form. It's very true. We do like to eat them though. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I will take any cake baked for me. Mm -hmm. Please don't ask me to bake you a cake. Yeah, pretty much. I printed off this recipe from the 1910 edition of the Queenslander magazine. And this cake recipe had butter, sugar, flour, eggs. However, when we talked about this cake, it's talked about as a sponge cake. And you had asked the question, what's a sponge cake? What's mm. a pound cake? What the what the what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for raising questions. <laughs> so I really, I, I made this cake with this recipe and it's a really heavy cake. It's not quite a pound cake because a pound cake would have equal weights of butter, sugar, and flour. Mm -hmm. This isn't equal weights, so it does not fall in the pound cake okay. category. The best I can find is it's a butter cake. I've never heard of a butter cake. I, yeah, I don't know, like a typical birthday cake type cake. In this first one, it was beat together the sugar and the butter, add in your eggs and flour, make, make a basic batter, okay. pour yeah. it in a pan and bake it. Cut it into squares. I did the whole dipping it, icing it. We'll talk about that step second. Mm -hmm. And I cut into a piece and I ate it. And I was like, this is a heavy, rich cake. Nothing about this says light and spongy. Mm. So I started looking up what's actually a sponge cake. A sponge cake is supposed to rely only on the eggs. It doesn't have to do with any fats. So it's okay. a much lighter cake. I happen to have this great cookbook from Australia, from my mom, because you know as I am from Australia. It's the Australian Women's <laughs> Weekly. Sorry. Oh, yeah. You are from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the sponge cake that they have in here, totally different story. It's got three eggs, sugar, flour, corn flour or cornstarch, a tablespoon of butter melted in hot water, and that is your sponge cake in this one. Oh, okay. And so this one is beat the eggs until they are light and fluffy. Slowly add in your sugar as you're beating these eggs mm -hmm. until it is thick and the sugar is dissolved. Then you carefully fold in your sifted dry ingredients. And then you've got this butter hot water thing that you add in at the very end. You just quickly fold it in without damage the airiness yeah. of your batter. Right. And then you pour it into your pan and bake it. The baking time on the thing on both these was about the same. I used the exact same pan and I got two very different cakes. Hmm. So the sponge cake was lighter, fluffier. It was definitely a drier cake and not as rich and heavy as this first one was. Well, because it didn't have all that butter. Because it didn't have half a cup of butter in it, right? Yeah. And uh, I have to say, like, it sounded like a sponge. <laughs> like, you know how when you yeah, press yeah. on a sponge, it kind of has like a mm -hmm. spongy sound? This yes, cake, spongy sounding cake. So that's yes. where I am going to assume the name sponge cake comes from because it sounds like a sponge. I think it looks a bit like a sponge as well. It looks pretty spongy. When you get those spongy. little air pockets yeah. in there. Is, these are the whole eggs, right, that you used? These are the whole eggs. Because I was just thinking about angel food, which is a form of sponge that's made with egg white. Exactly. So there's different forms of sponge cake mm -hmm. based on how you make it and put it together and you're totally right yeah. for a angel food cake you beat just the egg whites until they're what sort of like a meringue and then you fold yeah that's a tricky one too <sighs> i think there's something about sponge cake that is yes a little tricky and again i just saw a video pop up in my instagram feed and it was someone making a sponge cake and of they started they out did. with butter and sugar and i was like wtf <laughs> so <laughs> what is going on I have a feeling that some of the terminology here is getting muddled and maybe some of us are saying the wrong thing. But from what I can tell, sponge cakes should not have a bunch of butter in them. They should not be a heavy, dense, rich cake. 
they should be this light, airy, fluffy cake. Right. And sponge cakes are often used when you make a rolled cake or a jelly roll cake. Mm -hmm. And if you can imagine with me, or you've baked these before, a birthday cake would not do that. Whereas this sponge cake, it definitely is a lot more flexible and it yeah. has a lot more give and movement to it where you could probably bake it really thin and roll it up like you would in a jelly roll cake. Have you made a jelly roll cake? Good God, no. But I came across this as I was reading about it. <laughs> Good God, no. It's amazing, actually, how many times we bake stuff for this podcast, considering we bake like quick breads and stuff more yeah. than we bake like desserts and things. If anything, I have been made very aware just how much of a baker I am not because exactly. of the amount of baking we have started doing and the rabbit holes that I end up going down. I even fail at cookies sometimes. Oh, <laughs> like, right? I'm not the baker. So I'm going to put up the recipe that I used on the blog for the sponge cake because I think the second recipe I did was better. I liked it better in terms of the overall taste and texture of the cake. The first one I made was just so heavy and so rich and so dense. And then when this icing went on top of it and it just, it was like too much. I was like, I don't, this is so sweet and this is so rich. Mm -hmm. Check out the sponge cake. If you want the original, I'll even link to it in the show notes. There you go. All right. Then the icing, because this cake's mm -hmm. got to be iced. Looking at this <laughs> recipe from the original one, I read the same sentence six times and was like, I really don't know what I'm doing. So as I made these cakes and I kept staring at this, I was like, all right, 1910, get out of here. I've had it. <laughs> So uh, fun. this recipe from the original posting of it, I have decided, nope, that's not my shtick. We're going <laughs> to go for what we can is accessible, friends. <laughs> Sometimes there's a reason things evolve and change. Figure out there's better ways to do it. Exactly. So I took a recipe from the Australian Women's Weekly. Hmm. So they've got a chocolate icing recipe that I just modified a little bit because I didn't have enough icing sugar. And the first time I made it, I thought it was way too rich. So I also reduced the chocolate and everything in it. So the icing is a little bit different on cake number two as well. So uh, 350 grams of icing sugar, three tablespoons of cocoa powder, a tablespoon of butter, 95 grams of milk. The milk right. and the butter just warmed up together. As soon as they're warmed up, you take them off the stove, you oh. sift in your sugar and cocoa, and then you use that. And this coated all of the cake that I made. You coat each side of your little cake, roll it around in there. It's kind of a messy job. I found the mm -hmm. best way to do this without getting your fingers totally coated was some chopsticks. So you use chopsticks to like move your cake around. And then I just stabbed it right through the cake at the end and picked it up and then balanced it on two chopsticks and let some of the icing drip off and then dumped nice. it into the coconut, rolled it around <laughs> in there, popped it onto a drying rack and bada bing, bada boom. Just like that. Oh, and I should mention both of these cakes I baked the day before as recommended and let them sit for 24 hours before I chopped them up into two inch squares and did the icing part. So it's meant to be like day old cake. Mm -hmm. Right. So Heather. Well, I feel just a little bit bad because I only tried the one that was Ooh. on the top of the container you gave me. I didn't realize I was supposed to try both of them. However, as I told you earlier, when I came in the door, my husband had received the cake from you mm -hmm. and he told me that you gave him permission to eat a piece. What he said to me was, Aaron, just dropped off the best tasting cake I've ever eaten in my entire life. <laughs> oh, and here it is right here. He's like, when can I have another piece? <laughs> so he's all about the rich sugary. But he hasn't tried the top one. And I only tried the top layer, which was the second version. The sponge Go cake. Go get your Tupperware. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> think she was actually gonna go run and do that here he comes he wants You're to try me. the other one this is so good oh this is a different cake okay oh, wow. careful don't rip it <laughs> mm. real time guys which one did you like better let me try one more bite of the is this the bottom one yeah but i try another bite of the bottom <laughs> oh my god 
This is the best. <laughs> the bottom one, more chewy okay. and heavier. Yeah, you like that better. Okay. <laughs> I like a heavy cake. All right. <laughs> Mm. Oh my God. They are quite different. All right. So now that you have, that is quite a difference. That first recipe is so moist. It's mm. almost like the bottom of the cake because where it's sitting, it's, it's almost like the moisture sinks to the bottom of the cake. Oh, like the whole cake is just so sticky and like icing them was a little bit harder than the other ones because it didn't really sop up like the sponge cake's a drier cake therefore when you stick it in the icing it kind of i don't know like it it soaks it up a little easier and you can kind of yeah. whereas that one i was like come on icing <laughs> i could see that how it would almost slide off it yeah like it right. was really really heavy i like the sponge cake better it's the right texture it's what i expected it to be yeah i feel like with all that stuff in there it's just it's too rich with all the butter I can't yeah. believe I'm saying that. It was too much <laughs> butter. Here we have been recorded. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the vault now. Yeah, I agree. And because the cake is lighter, and like you said, it sort of absorbs a bit of that icing, the outside layer with the mm -hmm. icing and the coconut, that kind of first bite of it on the outside yeah. is the perfect ratio of cake and icing. Yeah, I think yeah. so. And I felt like the chocolate flavor came out and it, better in the second one yeah. well i think it's just because it was balanced better with a with a less rich cake i agree well there you have it folks the lamingtons were onto something that was that's a delicious cake we both have kids that aren't the biggest fan of coconut mm -hmm. so i was wondering and i didn't go and do this because i already made this cake twice we've got enough cake in the house but i was thinking you know for a kid's birthday cake if you took this and like coated it in sprinkles yes Mm, wouldn't totally. they love that yes or you could do like a different icing you could kind of change up your toppings maybe or maybe roll them in nuts or something i don't know i think you could totally play around instead of the coconut because i know we both have coconut yeah. adverse children i was thinking if it were a little bit smaller like a mm. two bite size you could do it's like a tea cake now. What I picture at high tea, I've never had high, gone for high tea. There's a name for those things. Petit four? Is Petit that... four. I think you're right. All those I... cute little decorated cakes. You could yeah. make one batch of cake, cut them into smaller little squares and do the, on the outside, different. Do the sprinkles, do the nuts, do the coconut. And so some people do talk about having lamingtons with a layer of jam in the middle. <gasps> And oh, that's like a whole yeah. nother topic of controversy in the world of lamingtons. And I was like, I am not touching that with a 10 foot pole. I have done enough. That's not authentic. Yes, it is. No, it's yeah. not. <laughs> I've done my work with sponge and buttery cakes. I am not, <laughs> not doing any more labor on this one. <laughs> Make these with the thick and heavy butter batter. Make these with a light and airy sponge cake make them with a cake you've got from a couple days ago yeah maybe it's angel food i mean who knows what kind of leftover cake you got cut it into small pieces yeah and turn it into something cute and new yeah and i like this chocolate coconut i mean you can't go wrong with yeah definitely recommend it i think it's tasty and delicious and uh well it wouldn't be cake if it didn't make us say a whole bunch of four letter words right <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Erin. Thank you for all of your hard work taste testing. Happy Australia Day. <laughs> Enjoy Australia Day. <laughs> Go out, have some lamingtons, argue about cakes. Sounds like a good time. It does sound like a good time. And now for the fine print. Join us over on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And on our website at threekitchenspodcast.com. Word of mouth is the number one way people find a new podcast. And remember, when you like, follow, subscribe, and leave a review, it helps more people find us. Thank you so much for listening. Oh, lemon curd. Mm. Mm. Well, <laughs> now we have so many ideas. <laughs>